Hey guys, it's me, Brooke Surgeoner. You can check out my latest album, Moon Waves, now wherever you stream, and you're watching Randomodium. Hey guys, we are here with the one, the very talented Brooke Surgeoner. Uh, don't ask me how many times I've had to Google translate that, but we did, and we are now here. Uh, Brooke, thank you so much for joining us. Corey, thank you for having me. And I was really like shocked that you said my name right. Trust me, it took <laughs> just being honest right off the bat. I had to look it, it up. It took a while. <laughs> I, I think I saw it somewhere where it was like phonetically put out, and I don't know if that was by you or somewhere else. That's my Instagram. I just put it in there. Like I think that's where. Okay. <laughs> So you could just spell it out like surgeon or that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, yeah. hi. So for people that don't know, who are you? Where are you from? What do you do? Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Uh, so I'm a musician, singer, songwriter. I live uh, in Erie, Pennsylvania, and I've been just writing, recording, creating music and music videos, art combined with my cosplay and just whatever I can imagine. Um, I, yeah, indie folk kind of music. Mm -hmm. the, the main reason I have you here is obviously we talked in the pre-interview is uh, your new album is out, Moon Waves. Uh, yes. It's a very good album. Thank you. I, th Thank I you. thoroughly enjoyed listening to it. Uh, there's a few songs I really liked more than others, but uh, I guess th the question for me to you would be, starting it like from conception to final recordings to having it out what was that like can you break it down for me okay um well the album really consists of songs i've written over the past several years and even the name of the album moon waves um i kind of got the idea from almost like where these songs began where i was in my life at that time to where I am now, the transition of it. And there's a song, Tidal Waves, on the album that really was like the middle point. Things started to change for me. I just started to write differently. I looked at everything a lot differently. I mean, like that just happens as you grow up and when you go through things. And there, I, I had tried attempting to record, the idea was to record an EP um, about, I don't know, maybe six years ago. And it was called going to be called the moon. And on it, there were, I don't know, like the songs weren't, weren't bad. I uh, never finished them. And honestly, even the title, the moon, which is a very, you know, basic name, but I had a song called the moon and that's why I was going to name it. Cause I just thought it sounded cute to be honest and never released that and never released any of the songs except uh, one, one song, which was Beer Babe. And I think it was kind of like, I don't know, that also inspired the name of the album because I had stopped writing after going through some, some hard things in my life and then started writing again. And it was almost like, who was I as an artist when this project began? Who am I now? And all the songs in between. And I really just wanted an album that was full of a lot of different topics that like anybody could listen to and relate to at least one of them whether it be like a happy song a sad song because I just I feel all those things I want to talk about all those things whether it be cheesy or really deep and really hard to talk about I think it's really cool to connect over those things so <laughs> yeah I mean uh as far as like the process of it being done I think I, I I think now I started writing new songs and I'm really excited to start releasing those ones, but I, I really wanted to capture this moment in my life and my time and in time of like everything that I had written that really had brought me to this place as an artist before I move on to the new things. And I'm just so proud that the songs came out how I imagined them to be. And I think being able to work with the right people who helped get that bring that vision to life was a big thing because I didn't want to just put them out and then not sound as good as they could be um I I'm losing track now where where, where are we at <laughs> for the album moon waves no I was no I... You, you, you were you were talking about the the creation of the album 
and uh, how uh, it takes a while and the conception of it. And you were, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, 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 I think uh, I also just wanted every song on there to kind of be a staple of something very important in my life. I can um, think about where I was at that time, uh, what those emotions meant to me. And I didn't want there to be any filler. I didn't just want a filler song. So I, I just think once I had that group of songs that was like, heck yeah, I can play these. I can listen to these with so much pride and I don't want to skip over them. Um, then it's like, all right, let's create the album. Let's do it. Cause I mean, there was a couple of songs that didn't make it that we're going to. And I, when I played them live, I just didn't really feel anything from it. And I was like, you know what, if I don't feel anything from it, I don't know why anyone else would. So just kind of right. skipped it. Once I had like the collection of songs that really felt like it was one piece of, you know, art, like work, one album, um, then it just came to recording it right. and finishing it. Right. One thing I really liked about the album in general is you can tell you're telling a story and you can't really get that with a lot of artists. I mean, you Thank can, you. but there's, there's, there's not a, there, there's a handful of artists that you can listen to a song and hear a story from beginning to end. And it was, there's a certain song, which I'm saving for later, later in this interview. Okay. Yeah. But uh, black coffee was a, is a very good start because Thank you. I drink a lot of, I wouldn't say real coffee. My mom doesn't call it real coffee, but uh, I drink a lot of coffee, frappuccinos and star Starbucks. But um, yeah. you make a very good point to say drinking a black coffee is basically bitter. And it was mm. so poetic. And I was like, oh, I get it. So I so <laughs> that for me, that's when like a light bulb went off and I was like, OK, all right. This album is really good. That's really cool that you say that. And I, yeah. I mean, you thank you so much. I love listening to other artists and hearing a story and trying to piece together a story from what they're singing or either it'd be like, Oh, what, what was, what happened to them? Or you put right. yourself in those shoes and you feel your own story through that. I think that's seriously the biggest achievement I could have as a songwriter is for someone like you to listen to it, get your own, you know, feel for it, what it means to you, but also hear a story in it. That's really, really cool. So thank you. Is there songs that, like you said, there's songs that didn't make it mm -hmm. when conceptualizing the album, was there an overall story you wanted to tell? Cause I know like black coffee is a, one story. And obviously for example, which we will get there, but tidal waves is another story. And was there an overall story or is it just a collection of memories basically in your head? I think it's a collection of memories. Um, no, I wasn't trying to be like, oh, this is a heartbreak album or this is like any in particular topic. This is just things that I have gone through. And that's a really cool thing to do is to be so vulnerable. And people right. say, this is good. <laughs> like because I, I mean, people who know me, they, they know that I'm a, a, I'm an emotional person, but I, I really keep to myself and I think I'm pretty, um, kind of quiet, not quiet about what I'm going through at the moment, but when it comes to like writing a song, that's kind of where I'm telling you really how I'm feeling and what I'm going through. It's kind of my way of actually figuring out how I feel and being able to play them it's it's like i'm acknowledging the things in the stories that i have gone through to to create this it it makes me feel like i don't know do you ever just like for instance like a relationship you've had it's almost feel like it, you feel like it never even happened at this point if you broke up with somebody like let's say three years ago you forget that that even was a part of your life and then for me to be able to play a song that I wrote about that person in some kind of way or something that inspired that that song I'm like oh that happened like for me right. I'm constantly remembering that in a way that's I think very lovely I don't I don't think it like puts me in a dark place or anything right. like that but I, I like that I'm able to connect with people through it for, we'll back up a little bit, but when you first started making music, did you ever think I want to make music to make people feel things or was it just to 
play small places in Erie or, or whatnot? Um, when I started making music, I was like 10 years old Mm -hmm. and I, I just didn't have anyone to talk to. And so me writing was me talking, me performing was me telling people how I felt. And, um, it just so happened that when I did that, I found people were listening to what I had to say. That felt good. Um, when I was young, obviously it was a little bit different. You're your dreams of, of, you know, oh, I'm going to play for stadiums full of people or something like that. And as I've gotten older and continue to play and continue to write and write about new things, um, I feel like people coming up to me afterwards and saying, hey, that, that song, and then telling me about their life, like, like feeling so comfortable that I we connected over that I was like dang I mean like that's how I feel when I listen to other people's music I'm like am I this person for somebody else and I think that's that's what I really like more than anything Mm -hmm. is there any kind of artist that you you base your sound off of because I know I guess we'll go here now we're not going that way but we're getting there okay Uh, we're getting there where are we going I've done a so f- I didn't find you directly. I, I don't know if that's what you've heard from other people, but I found you through other artists in Erie um, to get to Brooke Surgeoner. Um, okay. For example, the first two eleven people in Concrete sure. Castles. Mm-hmm. And I noticed when you perform with them, your sound changes slightly mm-hmm. versus like the, the sound you play on the album. Uh, you going a breathier sound in the album versus maybe you was doing the, that thing you do cover you did with first to 11. Uh, was that a song choice or was that a, is that a Brooke choice or is that a, this is the sound that I want this album to be period. I think when you listen to more like our, our collaboration of like, Hey there, Delilah, that's mm-hmm. more me having a say in how I'd like to sound. Um, I love, rock music i love punk and emo music but i don't think i necessarily fit in with that genre um so so i i think for like a cover song uh especially like that thing you do it was more just like we want it to be upbeat and fun i feel like that song deserves to be fun um but then i i've done a few covers of like um dashboard confessional Mm -hmm. i don't know if hands down. And I think when I listen to that, I hear myself in it. I hear how I took a song that I really loved and then I kind of made it Brooke. Um, I like doing that, but, uh, I, the direction of the album was just like, that's how I sound. And I, I I think that was another thing where I really wanted to finish the album so I can kind of like move on from that too and try new things um more pop more I don't know just kind of test some stuff out and kind of evolve my sound a little bit but yeah well I think my sound's a collection of people that I just really love and Mm -hmm. listen to um I grew up around like my like my mom and would listen to a lot of like Dixie Chicks growing up Yeah, my mom did too, yeah. So I was, yeah, (laughs) which I still love. And I think like a lot of things that we like around when we're younger and then we grow up, sometimes we just kind of like, oh, I remember that part. I I love, I really love that stuff. And I really love the harmonies. And I I love um, how someone could take like a bunch of instruments, but they're all acoustic. And it's just something about having a really simple, like, bass for a song and somehow still suck you in and make you feel like so much i love listening to songs that don't have a lot going on but yet you are just so invested um i think a lot of my sound does come from that but also growing up i just really love catchy music so I've I've heard that my songs get stuck in people's heads, which I'm proud of. Um, 
but I, I, I kind of take some catchiness that I, I, I remember growing up with, uh, with just, I don't know, 2000s pop or just pop punk and stuff that kind of stick with you. Also like the harmonies, uh, acoustic instruments, growing up around folk country music and then a bunch of artists that I'm really into right now. Um, I love like indie female artists and I know that's such a broad thing to say but uh if I if I look actually let me look at my I'm so bad at answering this question no it's okay I kind of music do you listen to by the way uh hmm. pop punk uh pop punk. alternative rock and, who's your uh, favorite Bur pop punk man Ooh, all time low oh okay yeah yeah sorry I cut you off no you're good Who were you going to say? Were you saying a Brooks Surgeoner? <laughs> Actually, yeah. I was going to say apparently Brooks Surgeoner. <laughs> I cut you off. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> you cut me off on your own name. It's not my fault. I know. <laughs> um. Okay. There's this band, The Wild Reeds. Have you ever heard okay. of The Wild Reeds? No. Um, They're a great artist that I think I definitely really love their sound and evolved a little bit into. Uh, and there's like three female artists like front women um in it and i got to talk to them one time after a show and i was like do you guys like write your songs together or and she's like the, the one girl mackenzie in the band she said no we all write our own individual songs and then we bring them in and let the other girls kind of back them up on that particular song so they have a lot of harmonies very indie rock driven but also like you hear some banjo in it um nice. and it's it's just very emotionally driven but also really fun to listen to i love that stuff um, Gabrielle Applin. I love Gabrielle Applin. Uh, Theo Hellos. Regina Spector. I loved her growing up. Like Ingrid Michaelson. I remember listening to her. Mm -hmm. Lights yeah. is an artist I really, really love. And I mean, like that's like a sound that I'm not, I'm, I don't sound like lights at all, but like, she's an artist lyrically. I, I, I really look up to i just love how she writes songs they're catchy but yeah. like it makes me think do you know do you listen to lights at all no but i, th I think i've heard of them but i now that you mentioned it, i think i might listen to them um so. death cab for cutie too death cab absolutely death of cab course absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah so when when writing a song some people write music first and then then the lyrics some people will you both, where where do you start? Where does it go? Is it a song you hear while you're driving and you go, wait a second, I can write lyrics to this or is it, because sometimes I don't write songs, but like I, I come up with songs and I never get anywhere with them, but sometimes it's just the lyrics. Sometimes it's the tune. What is it for mm -hmm. you? Um, I, It's different every time. Mm -hmm. I actually, it's funny. I just finished a song like an hour ago. And I'm very excited about it. And that, for instance, is it, like I said, it's different every time. So when it it really hits me and takes over at the moment, I'm really just like sucked in. Um, it could be that I come up with like a da, 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 and then I like kind of fill in the words to go in with like that melody that I'm thinking of. Um, sometimes if there's just like a lot that's going on in my brain, I'll just pick up my guitar and start strumming and I, I typically will just start singing how I'm feeling without thinking too much into it, without thinking if it rhymes. Um, it's almost just become a habit now that that's almost like an audio journal is to just, and I mean, like people who journal aren't like thinking what they're, they're about to say and then write it down you're just writing down as you're you're, you're going through it like today I did this I felt like this but mm -hmm. instead I'm doing that with a guitar and I'm I'm just saying these things and I've gotten the habit of doing that that so a lot of times they start to rhyme and comes up with something um but I, I mean there's been times where I've been inspired by like a real life like event and it reminds me of something else. And instead of getting so invested into what I personally went through, for example, um, there's a song 
called Another World that didn't make it to the album but that I was like, oh my gosh, that kind of makes me think of Inuyasha, <laughs> the anime Inuyasha. So instead of me being like writing a whole song on what I was going through in this person of that I was interested in about to leave, I I instead started to think about this character that I was familiar with and how she was feeling. And it kind of took me out of my own body. And I was able to like be a character for a second and fill in the rest with her own words. Um, those are fun. It's not as deep. Um, but I, I really think the most uh, cathartic thing that I can do is to sing how I'm feeling. And if it's something I think that is special, I usually remember it or I record it on my phone and then I revisit it and then I add guitar to it. I can usually hear in my brain what kind of sound I want underneath it mm. to help with the recording process. Do you do all the recording yourself? Do you Did you start doing all the recording yourself and now you kind of started, you know, going to studios or is it all you or... Um, both. So okay. I do, I've always done like the recordings myself for almost all my stuff. Um, and this time I wanted help on it so it could really sound as best as it could. Um, so I record like all my vocals, I'll record my guitar. If there's, um, mandolin or banjo, I'll record that. Uh, a lot of times I create, I record the piano, um, and l I'm lucky enough to work at a studio where I, I can do that. So that's, that's really cool how I got to learn how to record myself properly. And, um, for instance, on this album, I pretty much completed like, let's say like 50 or 60% of a song. And then I brought it to Zach Zern at Carver Booth Studios. He listened to it and was able to hear things that I was like, yes, that's what I was thinking. But like, I just didn't know what it would need it. Or like he has an idea. Yeah, that he can add on to it. And I think that's a really cool thing to work with somebody who understands your vision a little bit better. Cause I've had to work with a few different people to get to there. You know, it's not always a home run for, no, it's not I mean, that that's just a hard, that's just part of it. Yeah. Being an artist right. and finding the right person who kind of understands your sound. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a, a mixed bag. Like I, I write all my, I write all my songs myself, but as far as finishing them, I, I can't play drums. I wish I could. So how many in instruments do you play? I think you named it, I think three or four already. How many instruments can you actually play well enough to sit down and record them? <laughs> uh, guitar is my main instrument. Um, actually, guitar, technically your vocal is your main instrument, technically. I, I guess so. I guess so. So vocals, <laughs> we'll just add another one on the list for fun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, vocals, vocals, guitar. guitar. Uh, piano, mandolin, banjo, bass. Sometimes, if it's simple, if it's complicated, I'll have a friend step in for that. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, the main, the main instrument, the main like I don't know, base of like my folk stuff right. is definitely what I I try to do myself. Right. Oh. Right. Yeah. Were you self-taught in these instruments? Because that's a lot of work to master all those instruments as well. Uh, yes. Uh, piano, my mom taught me when I was really young. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely have been very, I, I like learn by ear mm -hmm. kind of artist. Um, mm -hmm. I got guitar lessons for a few years when I was a teenager. But what sucked about that is when I was like 14, I just wanted to write, I wanted to just write songs. Right. And, um, I had a teacher who was really well knowledge with theory and would just like spend 20 minutes of our lesson, not talking to me, not connecting with me, just writing down theory and then slapping it on like a, a music stand. And it's like, okay, this, this, and this, and this. And I'm like, uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. And then I wouldn't practice. Right it because I just wasn't connecting with it and so I did learn like theory when I was younger and I just lost it because I wasn't I wasn't with someone I was like passionate about with it but I would I I think that's what I do want to work on is theory stuff now but other than that yeah I have I'm pretty self-taught 
Um, and yeah, <laughs> self-taught. <laughs> and you said you teach music now. So how is being self-taught helped you teach other people that maybe don't listen by ear that maybe sure. have to read music that can't sight read that, that don't have the, the knowledge that you had at that age, but can get to the knowledge that you have at that age. Uh, I, as a teacher, I am trying to teach how I saw my past teacher make mistakes. And that was like, not teaching me what I wanted to learn. We, I work where I work at, um, we were called rock school studios and we're called monochrome studios. Uh, we have a few te teachers here who are like Sam Gilman. He is just, oh my gosh, she's so good at theory. Um, Ryan, the owner is. And so we have teachers here to do that. And I, they just need to teach me some stuff too. And I, I like to work with like the younger girls who, are like, I want to learn this Taylor Swift song. I think for me, what helps me practice was playing things that like I wanted to play. If it's someone who wants to learn like scales and stuff, I'll teach them scales and all that stuff. But like, I, I just, there was a lot of mistakes that my guitar teacher missed out. So I want to step in and be that person for like my students. So they just have a really good experience, whether they do something with music later on or not, they're going to remember coming in here for a half hour or playing songs with, you know, somewhat like another girl and just like really having a good time because I, I, I like to teach in a way that they don't even realize they're being taught a new, like skill, I don't tech. Yeah. Skill technique. Um, like, Oh, I wanted to learn this, uh, Bieber Bridger song. Okay. Well, in this song, she does this with power chords. We're going to teach you power chords now. You know what I mean? So that that's kind of how I like to teach. Wow. That's a lot, you know, little layers here and there. And then it becomes full circle when you think about it. And mm -hmm. that's really cool. And that's a good technique because not a lot of te teachers are very, some teachers are very like, this is the lesson. This is the the example. This is how you do it. This is the execution. Whereas teachers like you, it's, this is what we're doing but you can also go here, you can go here, you can go here, you can go here. And at the end, you get the finished product and you've learned four things instead of one. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you and, and I just want them to be able to like play a whole song and just, yeah, yeah. you know, show that off. And yeah, I, I, I think that's so cool to have like something like that they accomplished at the end of it. I can play this whole song now because I was practicing these chords and these chords and these chords, learning all of this stuff along the way. And now the next song I learn is going to be so much easier because I already learned those you... chords. I already learned how to, how to pick this way or, you know, like it, it's just, I, I think it's a fun way to learn. It's not necessarily the most like, again, it's not the most theory driven thing. And that's my mistake. Definitely. <laughs> but I, I, I don't play, I am very, um, I pick up my guitar as a very therapeutic thing. So I think like another thing is half the time our lessons are like therapy sessions. It's me right. talking with them about their day and how do you feel? You're sad. Let's, let's play a sad song today. Cause then I want them to go home and be able to like practice something when, when they're feeling a certain way, that's so important to me, especially at this age, you know, mm -hmm. you know, them being like 10 to like 18 years old, that was music was everything and I it's cool I don't know how you feel but like as we've gotten older I know we still listen to music all the time but like when you're a teenager it's it's one of those things that's so lame to say but you know I just remember like music is life but like <laughs> it is but it it, 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 it so it, much cut I hate to jump on your words there but go for it you you're right because like it doesn't matter what age you're at it like with the music, like with yours, you can hear the intention. But like mm -hmm. when you're listening to like a song when you're younger, you feel it more because you're not in an age to understand it fully. So you, oh, you go, yeah. oh, that's me. That's that's how I feel right now. Like, for yeah. example, Simple Plan. I yeah. used to play Simple Plan a lot. And not I didn't necessarily relate to everything, but like there's bits and pieces I can go, oh, OK, that or oh, OK, this or OK, that. And go, okay, they get it, but they're also relating to everybody. So you don't necessarily feel alone at the end of the day. Absolutely. I, 
and to jump on like your simple plan raid, like I remember like me and my brother coming home. Do you remember Fuse? Did you ever watch yeah. Fuse? Yeah. yeah, like that was like the channel we came home from school, put on Fuse. I remember oh, yeah. like perfect coming on from Simple Plan. So like, you don't get me, Dad. And we just though, but like it was so nice to have something like like that that we could just sing at the top of our lungs and feel understood in a way. And I mean, it's again exactly what I say that I didn't even realize I'm doing now because I'm just venting. But mm. yet there's another person listening feeling like someone else understands what they're going through and yeah to be at that age where i can teach them to do the same exact thing because mm -hmm. music is a you know such a huge part of culture but it, it's so like i don't know impressionable at that age mm -hmm. i want the experience to be so enjoyable that even if they're you know 20 years older they're going through something or they're just, oh, I could pick up my guitar. I know how to play that song. And it's not like an experience that was stressful for them. Right. I, uh, a long time ago, I used to work at an assisted living and the music director and I had come together and we actually made an out. I wasn't really on the album, but like I was helping them with the process of it. And they made an album with a bunch of people in their like eighties and nineties. And they had this one woman, um, I can't remember her name now, but she said, oh, yeah, I could play a piano. I was like, oh, no, no sheet music, nothing. And then just played a full song. And I was like, like, it's insane yeah. how much memory music yeah. has on uh, if, uh, uh, an effect on someone's life, no matter if it's sad, happy. It, it's going to be there because it's storytelling at its finest. Um I know you do storytelling in your music. Storytelling is important because it gets the point across, like you said earlier. Um, yeah, no, I just think it's it's a good outlet for anybody. It's poet. It starts with poetry, and then it becomes yeah. music, and then it becomes music videos, and then it becomes an art form, and then you can put it yeah. out there. It, it's all intertwined in the same way, and it no matter what part of it that you're on, it's still something you've created, and it, it's it's a cool process to watch. I actually have this. Ex experience of uh being asked to play at um this person's grandmother's or mother's birthday and their let's just say it was their mother i, I can't remember exactly but they were in a home and they, they let me know that like hey like she um has dementia and like doesn't remember a whole lot but like she loves music and could you dress up as a princess and play a couple? It was like, uh, I don't know if I played like this little light of mine or just like this um, right. Christian song or something for them. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know what I was walking into. And I noticed it was like her and other people there gathered around for this. And I pulled out my guitar and I did notice, you know, just people watching that, like, she didn't remember like her grandkids names and stuff. It was, it was sad to see, but as soon as I started playing the songs, she knew every single word. Like, it's just so cool that that part of our brain just takes over. I didn't, I didn't know all the verses, like whatever we were doing, it was, um, yeah, I don't know if it was like, you're my sunshine or it was this little line of mine or something like that. But like, she knew every single word. And I just was like, do you want to like, here, I just gave her the mic and just let her sing. And it was yeah. a really beautiful moment to be a part of. Yeah. Yeah. Music changes people. And, you know, you some people, I have a friend that says, oh, I don't listen to a lot of music, but like, we'll, we'll be in the car and he'll, he'll, oh, I know this song. I'm like, but you do listen to music. You do listen to music. <laughs> like you might not listen to a, a lot of music, but you listen yeah. to some music and you, and you do know it. And, you know, yeah. it's cool yeah. to hear influences and, and things that happen that changes people. Um, you know, it's cool for somebody like you to like put your heart and soul into songs and, and to sing about them. And, you know, like for example, um, tidal wave is a, is a good example. Um, I don't remember how I landed on tidal waves, but, uh, I think it was the video you posted about tidal waves and the meaning behind tidal waves. 
mm-hmm. because uh like you actually I also lost my dad last year so last year yeah I am so, so. sorry yeah. yeah so no so listening to tidal waves uh yeah it meant a lot and uh it's one of the songs on the albums that started me into looking into you more and no, it was a really good album and the song title waves was a really good representation of what you were going through at that time. And do mm-hmm. you maybe want to talk about it for people that don't know if you don't, don't worry about it, but if you do, if you do. And... Sure. So, I mean, we did talk about, you know, how I was going to make this EP, right? Mm-hmm. I was, I was recording. I even remember investing money in New York city and working with um, a producer out there on some songs and So that was the plan was I was going to put out this EP called the moon and then life gets, gets in the way. And, uh, my dad passed away and just so everyone knows, like my, my dad fought with cancer five times, five times that's on and off of, you know, being in remission for a few years and then coming back and then having surgery, then going through chemo, then him being in remission again, it was really, really hard to see. And as sad and hard as that is, I got to see this. I don't know. I got to see my dad change and I got to see his heart soften after going through it a few times. And so I had a really beautiful life with him. Um, And I feel very fortunate to have seen him become such a great man by the end of it. And I was just get so close and be best friends. Um, but he passed away and I didn't write for like a whole year. I, the last song I wrote for like months was tidal waves. And that's because on, you know, the last conversation I had with him, he, he asked me to write a song for him. And he said, I want you to play it at my funeral and I want you to play it for everybody. And it was like, oh, okay, dad, like, that's a really hard thing. And I, right. I really held on to that. And I wrote it that week. I played it at, as, at his, his memorial service. And um, I don't know how I got through it. I did. And it was just one of those things, like, I wasn't ready to share it yet. Like, I know he asked me to share it. And it, I had tried to play it, like, live, like, once or twice thinking that that was like a good moment to do it at like a certain show. And it just wasn't like, I, I couldn't get through it. People weren't listening. It was just, it wasn't right. So I held on to it. And as someone, you know, who, when you lose somebody, it grief is something that just like comes and goes like a wave. And it just happened that I put the song kind of around that of how um I don't know just we're constantly fighting it fighting feeling like we're about to drown in what we've gone through and then also at the same time like I'm not as sad as I should be why why is that and for me I I felt comfort in feeling like he's still with me and even when I lost him I didn't feel like he was actually gone and I think I almost feel like he helped me write that song. Like, I was like, how, how the hell did I write that? Like, how did my dad ask me to do this? And I just happened to actually write it. And I just, I feel like he was with me in those moments at the hardest, hardest thing I was going through that I had to go through so far. And, um, it, it just took me a while to actually be able to share it. And, I knew when I was going to share it, it had to be in a way that people were going to listen. And my best way of expressing that is through music videos. So that's another thing that held it off. Like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to, what, what is this music video going to be about? Like, I don't, how am I going to represent that? And something cool with that music video, um, which is on my YouTube channel. You guys can check it out if you like. And, uh, I, I know at first, like I, when I'm l- listening to a song, I write, or I start to get these like images or, you know, just some of these little movies in my head. And it's like, exactly telling a story while I'm listening to something. And, um, I, I 
could see myself drowning, but I could see myself getting pulled out of water. And that was like all I had for like two years was like how, okay, but like what else happens? Are there other people there? And I fought back and forth with like, oh, we'll have other people in the video who lost people. We're all connected and we help get each other out. And the more I, more time I had to heal, the more I realized that like I had to pull myself out and that I'm constantly pulling myself out and we can have all the love that we want from other people. And I think if you haven't lost anybody, you might think that like, oh, well, you know, they've got so much support. They'll be okay. It's like, no, we are constantly fighting with our grief and, you know, something that we lost. And it, it's like our own strength at the end of the day that has to pick ourselves back up to wake up in the morning, to keep going. And what is it for you that, you know, picks you up the next day? And for me, it was feeling like my dad's still with me and pulling me out all the time. So I kind of wanted to represent that song. I don't know. People have seen it a few different ways, which I'm, I, which is kind of cool to have like, a different interpretation of it interpret right. yeah um so i guess instead of me going into that how how did you interpret that video with that song what did it mean to you it's weird because the way you were describing it was the way i kind of saw it but mm -hmm. i obviously put myself in that position as well sure. um especially the way you're describing it in words as well um because with loss you know you're not alone, but you're alone. You're yeah. Yeah. You can, you can talk to other people about it, even family members about it. Like I have two brothers. We were all there. Like I have my mom's still around. Like we all were there, but at the, our experiences differ on how you handle yeah. it. Yeah. So, you know, being pulled out was a really great um, metaphor. Um, being sucked under was a really great metaphor. I remember when I lost my dad, I literally like yelled at a wall for two hours. Like, it's something you just you're not prepared for and you know like for example going into a wave you're not prepared for if it comes back and pull, you know pulls you under or if you if mm -hmm. you hit it and you can go back out mm -hmm. so you know you relating it to a wave was a really beautiful metaphor and that's why it stuck with me and i mm -hmm. think the overall not even the music video the song itself was well crafted enough where like i got the message without having to overthink it and go yeah Cause there's songs where you go, Oh wait, what's the message behind it? Oh, wh what's going on? Like awkward example, but like dance dance by fallout boy. Like you don't know exactly where it's going. If you listen to it a few times, but with tidal wave, you know, the purpose, you know, the intention and it gets to a point and you listen to it for that purpose. And it, it mm -hmm. makes you feel a certain way. And so. That's, yeah. I think that's really, really cool to, have something that has like a purpose. I don't know. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's like, I was like, I need strings. It needs like these almost instrumental waves in a way that come in and pull out and just like work with exactly how I'm feeling. And I, that what was cool about that song too is I got to really just lose myself in the recording process of it that I felt like I got closure with it. Mm -hmm. um, I was just like crying, singing it. and Exactly. And I know that it was really hard for me to put out, but once I did, I felt really relieved because it was like, again, it was a lot. It was the last thing my dad asked. The last thing my dad said to me was that. And if I, if I let go of that, like, I don't have anything else, but then I realized like, no, me letting go of that is I'm is, getting uh, so much more people are being, you're, you're able to listen to it. And it's now your experience right. and having a purpose. I, I think sometimes songs aren't supposed to give you answers but it's just to make you feel like understood because like there's nothing that can make that better right but to just know that like you're not alone in that you're not alone in being alone 
um, that's, I think it's just a really beautiful thing to be able to share with another person. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm sorry about your loss. Um, you but well. I'm glad that we have been able to connect with that in a way. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you even saying like how you have brothers and stuff and I have a brother too, you know, I have a brother and my mom and we all went through it, but mm -hmm. no, like they didn't pull me out. I also huh. couldn't pull them out. Their experiences are different. Their relationship is different. Yeah. Um, you know, and then we constantly even go back in our heads, like, what could I have done differently this day? Right. And right. you can't live like that. All you can like do is keep going. And hopefully you have good memories that you can go off of. Mm -hmm. But I, I think like our own personal strength is really what I wanted to get through with that. Yeah. Now, still talking about tidal wave, but, um, sure. when writing a song like tidal wave and, you know, doing it for your dad, how did you know when it was done? Cause you had such a connection to that song for a specific reason. And obviously you're doing it for your dad and you obviously your dad's not there to say, Oh yeah, that sounds great. When did you finally realize like it's perfect the way it is. It sounds great. And it's, it's ready. Um, well, I think do you when still I, when I'm, do you still think it's ready? <laughs> that's a good question. I think when I finish a song, and like as far as like writing it, like I just know immediately. I I know if something's missing. I know if there needs to be more. Um, that one again, I it kind of wrote itself. It it was something that like I didn't think. I just started like I would go up and I wrote the first verse one day. I let myself just take a take a breath and leave and come back to it, write the chorus, come back, started singing it, wrote the rest. Like it just kind of came out of me and I just was like, it's done. I don't know how it's done. It's done. Um, but I know with recording it, that one I I started a few different times. Um I think a lot of that has to do with where I finished recording it, which uh, was at Carpet Boost Studios. I, me as an artist, I needed to feel like my song was being held with care. Um, and the people I was working with there just kind of understood that. And it was nice to just them layer the strings and stuff on it. Even that though, I know when I recorded my vocals and like, it needs more harmonies, it needs more this. And I think there comes a time where it's like, you will never finish it if you want it to sound as perfect as you want it to be. Like that's, it'd be the same as me not ever releasing it because it's like, well, this, you know, this, I want to do this differently. And it's like, it's just time to let it go. I, I think I just had to let it go. It's not really like, is it done? It, it's just, it's time. I think that that's kind of what I had to just convince myself. It's really hard for me with a lot of things to let them go. I'm one of those holders. Someone could give me like a thumbtack and be like, Hey, I found this for you. And I'd be like, Oh my God, I can't get rid of it because this person right. gave it to me with intention. <laughs> so then I'll just have a random thumbtack on my shelf for the next 10 years it's um i think it was just another part of moon waves and that album and me realizing that it's time time to let it go and move on and and just grow not move on it's it's still a part of me it's still something that's a very big part that's going to impact the rest of my life but yeah i think just letting it go was the answer to that the i don't know if it was a promo video but it was like you doing the thing from uh, Love Actually with the cards. What? You know what I'm talking <laughs> no. about? You we had the cards and you were basically telling the story oh. about. <laughs> yes. I just said, yes. yeah. Okay. That, that was that another was... way of, me ex of, of telling people what it meant to me without having, because I was like, I can't, I can't even talk about it. I'll start crying. Oh, I, I couldn't get through that. I can't get through I'm that video. Crying. Oh, I can't get no, through that video. But... Like. <laughs> watching not just watching you cry but like you explaining what happens it's 
it's just, it does the same thing it does for you. It does for me. It makes me want to cry. And that's yeah. a good thing. Again, that is a good thing and it's healing. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it comes back to the point that like music moves people, you know, people don't move music, P music moves people. And yeah. it takes, I mean, it's your hands and your vocals that make the music, but at the end of the day, you're, you're reaching things you didn't know you could reach. I, I, I couldn't do it without music. I, right. I mean, I've said before and as you can hear with me talking when I start talking I just sometimes get so worked up in what I'm about to say that I say a million things and lose track of myself for some reason music calms me down and I am able to think clearer um, so mm -hmm. I, I don't I'm very I feel very grateful that I found an outlet at a such a young age to do that because otherwise I would probably just be holding a lot in. So instead I'll just be throwing it out there. <laughs> if you couldn't, if you weren't doing music, what would you be doing then? That's a good question, I guess. Mm. Cause well, it sounds know... like there's nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I definitely found other things I'm passionate about. I know when I was younger, I really wanted to uh, be a basketball player. Okay. But you know why? Space no. Jam, Space Jam. Hey, that's not that. Bad. And you know what? I was not good at it at all. <laughs> so. I just played basketball the other day. I used to play basketball with my dad all the time. And again, I was I'm very short for my age, so like it wasn't that good. I was like, oh, but I can play. So I went, and these people were yeah. like six two. I'm not even close. Yeah. And then they were like, they looked at me. They were like, oh, I was like, oh yeah, I haven't <laughs> played in like ten years. I uh... oh, I threw really... my back out within like ten minutes, and I was like. Oh, you probably had like your gym shorts on and you're oh, yeah, go, you're ready go to go, me. guys. Go, go, go. Oh, go man. No, I was I wasn't good. I also really don't do well under like sports with a team behind anything that like other people have to rely on me for. There's so much anxiety that oh, comes yeah. with that. And I'm like, I can't do that. I'm not a competitive person. I I feel like I'm going to let everybody down if I don't do this right. And I think being able to um, just create something that like I am in control over was very nice. Um, but I, I will say with making music and then making music videos, I found a mm -hmm. huge passion with storyboarding, um, editing videos. I love editing videos. I think uh, obviously I, I wouldn't have, discovered that unless I, you know, did what I did and, and kind of made my own journey through it. But if I wasn't doing music, I think I would be involved in making music videos and, uh, or just, I don't know. I would love to just edit. I, I, I forget what that's called where you is it flow. I think it's called flow where you just lose yourself in something and time so, yeah. goes by and you would like, hours will go by and you're like oh my gosh I have not left this room that happens yes when I'm doing music um which can also be a very stressful experience as well as much as it is like rewarding with editing and I think it's again because I edit with emotion and all of my music videos maybe besides like two of them I've actually edited all of my music videos um so I just want to get better at that too. And I, I, with my music students, I make their, I shoot their videos. I edit their videos. Um, and I really enjoy that. I think I would do that. Wow. Cause uh, basketball, I don't, I don't think, I think I missed my mark. Five, I think four, I know what I'm titling this video. Like, so that's good. Height. Yeah. What? <laughs> I think we're just going to title this video. Brooke does basketball. Brooke talks Brooke basketball and sports. <laughs> It's just a basketball uh, as the as the thumbnail. It's just a basketball. <laughs> I used to think Lola Bunny was my best friend. I thought that she was an actual. I thought this can, cartoon bunny was an actual person, and I was like, she's my best friend. Like we're gonna be basketball buddies one day. I don't know why my parents entertain that idea. It probably <laughs> is a big reason why I didn't have friends, and I started just staying in my room writing music, but. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. We can thank Space Jam and Lola Bunny for your career. Uh, yes. So <laughs> what's next for Brooke Surgeoner? 
Oh man, I already started recording new stuff. I am so pumped. New EP, what, new album. Um, I have a couple singles in mind. I think we'll probably work towards an album, but uh, I, 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 I'm a little shot after this one. Let's. I would like to tour this album this this year. Uh, so I am looking for a good booking agent. Anyone want to hit me up? I'm I'm searching for it, man. I, I just want to get out and play and meet people and perform music, play alongside other people, you know, even if how shows anything. Right. I just want to play and connect with people. So that this year is playing the album, meeting new people and uh, yeah, working on the next thing, the evolution of my sound. Very mm -hmm. excited about it. Yeah. And where can people find you if they don't know who you are and what you've done? You can find me by just looking at my name, Brooke Surgeoner. I think I'm spell Brooke Surgeoner. Would you like to spell it for the people? Sure. Surgeoner is S U R G E N E R. You can follow me on Instagram or wherever uh, you stream. So Spotify, iTunes, uh, uh, Pandora, um, brooksurgeoner.com is my website. And there is a link to all of my stuff there as well as my shows. Uh, where you guys can uh, get some merch or even pick up the album yourself. Um, I think Instagram is where I post the most, though. This is where I feel the most comfortable. Well, thank you so much for, for doing this, and I appreciate it. Absolutely. I had a good time. Thanks. Me too. All right. All right. See you later, Corey. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, of course. Bye.